Good evening folks and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today the 10th of November 2014 brought to you by Campbell Scientific Australia when measurements matter. Well it's all very quiet around the world in terms of cyclone activity so there's not too much happening anywhere. There is going to be a low pressure system in the Indian Ocean in the southern Indian Ocean developing on the western edge of the Australian area of responsibility and that's basically the only real cyclone activity in the southern hemisphere over the next week. And just to give you a look at where the models are showing this up we can see that on the weekend, this is on Saturday, we expect the system to be located out here which is a long way, a long long way away from Australia and outside of our area of responsibility. And pretty similar forecast from a lot of different computer models there's uh, there is a fair chance that this will intensify not quite sure whether it'll become a cyclone yet but certainly no chance of it coming towards Australia and you can see the exact opposite happening the expected track is pushing it further west towards Africa over towards the Australian and eastern region we can see that there is going to be a lot of convective activity in the Solomon Island region and while none of that is expected to become a cyclone or a tropical low at this point in time it's very early in the season it is quite promising to see this much convection occurring this early in the season in that particular part of the world for those of you new subscribers we actually have a, a new version of a product and it's only in beta testing at the moment and what this is is a just a a basic mud map of cyclone potential over the next 45 days. Now this is the only time I'm showing this to the public. From from tomorrow on all the updates to this map will be private subscriber only updates but you can see here over the next 45 days the signs and trends of the model guidance showing us dates and potential tracks of systems over the next 45 days. So once again this is a subscriber only map update and there it comes with a lot of caveats and a lot of beware and be careful uh, because we don't want you to take this for gospel uh, but it is a certainly a map that while it doesn't look the doesn't look the most professional takes me hours and hours to sift through and actually create based on a number and I talking a lot of different models and looking at trends in the guidance so it doesn't it doesn't just look at one or two model runs it looks at a number of models of the same model and it looks at trends over the course of a week and to create this graphic uh, it takes a long time so it is a su subscriber only graphic and it will look out towards 45 days time so our normal cyclone updates will only look out towards about five to seven days time so if you want to learn more about that become a subscriber and help OCC out alrighty getting into non cyclonic weather we're looking at some more showers and storms continuing across the North Kimberley and western top end along with some fairly active or very lightning active storms across inland Queensland along that or just east of that trough line there now also on Tuesday we might actually see some storms getting close to the southeast corner coastline however the bulk of those are expected to remain west of the ranges on Wednesday we see a continuation of storm potential across southeast Queensland and southern inland Queensland we definitely see a bit of an easing or a weakening of the or, or a laxening of the chances of storms across northwest Queensland. We still have the western top end and the Kimberley active. We still have all of that activity seeping through along a trough system all the way through the interior of WA. On Thursday, that WA activity continues. The top end activity starts to become uh, less widespread. We also see a... Con a reintroduction of a little bit of low level moisture across far northern Queensland so we might see uh, just some uh, isolated showers on the coast and the adjacent ranges. On the Friday we continue to see a continuation of that very isolated shower activity on the FNQ coast. A fairly isolated region of shower and storm activity across the parts of the Arnhem district but most of that activity will be in the far in the border regions of the far southwest parts of the territory and also along the Kimberley and the interior of WA getting further and further to the east in the medium term so we're looking now from the 14th of November on to the 17th of November we continue to see a lot of activity here in the Kimberley coast in the Kimberley coast and adjacent inland region and that activity and a lot of that moisture starting to get into the inland Pilbara and possibly the inland Gascoigne too, some of it might actually 
uh, make it to the coastline. So there are some signs that we might see some storms making it all the way to the coast. Now that's not the most frequent thing. Most of them tend to be inland because of the lack of steering winds. Uh, further to the east and the northeastern half of the Territory, not much happening. Even the western parts of the Territory, you're going to see activity, but it's going to be reasonably isolated. So it's not going to be anywhere near as scattered as what you got last week. Uh, further east towards Queensland, uh, really folks, it's a pretty boring four to eight day period for Queensland, not much happening. One thing, as I mentioned to note, is the activity that is continuing to occur out here in the Solomon Islands. Over the entire week, we're going to see some pretty good rainfalls out of that storm activity in the Kimberley. Also, some pretty decent rain here in the inland parts of the Pilbara and Gascoyne region from the shower and storm activity that's currently occurring and from future shower and storm activity over the next week. Uh, once again, Queensland, not much happening, but also bear in mind, once again, over the eight-day period, we're looking at falls of 150, 200 millimetres here in the far northeastern Coral Sea. So just recapping for today's tonight's broadcast, we are looking at a weak low developing in the far western parts of the Australian area of responsibility. That low is likely to develop a little bit more and push westwards away from Australia and towards Africa, so no real potential there of a cyclone in the Australian region for at least the next week. If you'd like a longer term look, remember we do have that subscription option open. Thanks for watching tonight folks and we'll have another on Thursday the 13th of November 2014. Have a great week, we'll talk then.